what a, a, an extraordinary um, and peaceful and tranquil world or earth or planet uh, that we have this opportunity to live on. And the speaker is not trying to um, enhance um, your uh, experience through these words. But for some reason, the human mind, or whatever, I don't know, purpose method, it wanted to create a like a value system, like a hierarchical um, way of looking at ourselves as an individual or as a species, a hierarchical way of looking at the planet. Uh, the mountains are up top, the sea is down at the bottom. Hierarchical in the way of, of our perception of how we think we should be seen as, but hierarchical in the way that we actually create a top, middle and bottom. Hierarchical in the universe, you see, the, the, the Earth has to be the most superior planet in the universe. It has to be. It's ours. You know, that's the one we need. We depend on it. An Earth that is indestructible, you see. <laughs> we are so concerned about the world, or the planet, to the extent that we, in our valuing system, uh, create indifferences. And we create um, opposing values. And this is uh, mankind and its suffering. All suffering is from the idea that mankind knows what's going on or wants to know what's going on or needs to know what's going on. In your body, there's not a need to know what's going on, just a hope. You see that little destructive world of hope that it continues to go on for as long as possible regardless of the quality regardless of what we um we see as um time because time is the most destructive method to experience it's it's, it's you know no no human mind can argue that time often destroys that uh, I came all the way up to Mount Everest, you know, right to the top. <laughs> I didn't really, you know. Um, and I've only got four minutes because the altitude and the thing is so um, not good. And of course, that's pretty a, a pretty safe way of looking at time. Is if you spend five minutes, you're going, your body's going to, you know, evaporate and die. But we have. An idea that this relationship between ourselves and this planet is based on time and this is this is another form of of suffering of course now I'm not here to say that this this body this mind is not suffering because we have we are determined to promote suffering so that we can see the good you see Suffering is, appear, is, is the bud, you know? so we have to understand what the bud is so we can get out of it, you know. When we put ourselves in a coffin and bury ourselves in the ground, we realize, whoa, <laughs> I wish I, maybe I should have lived it differently. So we, we get someone to dig a, a shuffle up and bring us back in another body, you know, because we're never happy with um, being here as a suffering entity. But we create our own suffering. It's the it's the um, the confusion of consciousness. So, whatever you see of your beautiful external world, I mean, does it match up to your beautiful internal world? You see, it has to be exactly the same as your beautiful internal world. Otherwise, you're valuing. Otherwise, you're opposing. Yeah. I wish I could feel as good as 
that beautiful sailing bird must feel flying through the sky. Well, that's what you're feeling, you see, because you're experiencing that beautiful bird flowing through the sky and your thoughts are based on you replicating through a perception, through a, a, a sensation. But we're not happy with the beautiful bird sailing through the sky. We have to, um, we have to go through in a, a punishing way. We have to punish ourselves to, to adhere to um, our minds and our thoughts. And of course, our foolhardy minds also then say, well, that's because we have to get up to the same level as Jesus or same level as Buddha or same level as God, you know, meaning top, middle and bottom, God, Jesus and you. That's the, um, that's the trick, you see, that's the trick from our systematic process. Let's, let's, let's develop a systematic process so that we can suffer. And we can start climbing up the ladder to hopefully reach the top. You see, there's no top, middle or bottom. In unity, in unified peace, in unified presence, in unified nature, in unified life, where is the division, you see? It's all ideas and concepts from a mind that has been so ingrained, so conditioned for centuries. It's not your fault, you see. You, you can't blame your mind for, for entertaining you, for um, convincing you, for judging you, for analyze, analyzing you, for devaluing or valuing you. You see, these opposite worlds, they've been going on for centuries. We love to punish our bodies, each other, and the planet. Now, this may sound negative, but, and so when I say, oh yes, so you're awakened or you're an enlightened speaker, it's easy for you to say. It's easy for anyone to say. It's not easy for anyone to, to be. To be at peace because they're so fighting against that what is not really your fault <laughs> no one is at fault something conspicuous something that wants to demoralize to infiltrate suffering I don't know what it is. It's maybe a, just a bad portion of consciousness. But then the speaker then falls into the trap of saying a bad portion in relationship to a good portion. You see, the mind will always take you to a side. It doesn't want to eradicate suffering. Because if it eradicates suffering, it's deceased. You see, the mind of division becomes deceased. It's very simple. If you if you have good and bad, and if you want to destroy bad, you're gonna have to destroy good. Yeah. So the mind says, if you destroy bad, everything seems to be good, but only for those who have experienced bad will they notify. Oh, now it's all good. The new ones that are born, only as good, will just be content, you see. That's what we want our children to be born as. Just new contented beings, which means eradicate opposing values. It's not possible. Because religion will tell you there's a, sa a Satan. They will tell you there's a devil. They will tell you there's aliens. Some people will tell you there's aliens in the space that we're being taken over by reptiles and all that stuff. So, how do you eradicate uh, the reptiles 
Yeah, the aliens, Satan. Now you just simply eradicate all words because they're simply words. Words and thoughts made into experiences and actions and meaning and purpose. And then you have to value it and judge it and compete and have preferences. All words leading you, leading division, to further division. But who am I? You see, <laughs> who the hell am I to tell you what you already know? It's already it's easy knowing. And those that know, in a good sense, they try their hardest to resolve all the suffering. Suffering that doesn't even belong to each individual. And all the bad, they say, well, we know, but we're just going to have fun because it's not going to improve. It's not going to improve or get better. You see, two opposing states, the cause of human suffering, the eradication of peace is, this, is for human species not have the ability to come together. And they can only come together when they become one, when they remove the association with the individual I, me, and you. The three words that keep us tied to sectarianism, to individuality, to racism, to communism, to capitalism, to all these isms. That's why it's an ism, I-S-M. Is, M. Is meaning I and consciousness, I the maple, S, the moving consciousness, and M, the masochists. Yeah, the masons, the, the, the uh, uh, so many words beginning with M that means division, you know. And then we have to try and resolve it by saying M for married. Let's bring it together. That's two people. What about the rest? You know? <laughs> We're not talking about a massive orgy. <laughs> We're talking about love. We're not even talking about forms. We're talking about actually experiencing this planet for what it is. Incredible, incredible heavenly paradisal love. Even in the biggest storm, that that you are can see the beauty of the storm within you. A storm arising often means a storm may destroy you. But the storm can also also give birth. The storm can also give birth to the new you. I don't want to change myself, you see. That's what the mind says. I don't want to change myself. I've become, I've become so um, comfortable with my name and my position and all that stuff. And tomorrow may be better, you see. There's always hope. There's always a question. Will it get better? Will I go to heaven? Will I be happy? How can I go to heaven? How can I be happy? What is it I have to do? Yeah. Will, how, what? Uh, well, go around in circles with these questioning words. Will I? How will I? What will I? And replace them with the final question. Who am I? And all of these words will become absolutely, incredibly pure to you. The you that is beyond me and I. Have a great day. Namaste. Om.